So hi Stephanie. Hi. Hi Dion. Hello. What are you hoping to get out of today's session? I'm hoping to get a better understanding about um, the topic and just basically grow my own um, mindset about the topic. So what are you hoping to get out of today's session? I'm hoping to understand different perspectives on sex, what some people think, what other people think, that are different from what I do. Okay, and would you say people in Nigeria publicly condemn sex or engaging in sex acts? Publicly, yes, people in Nigeria condemn sex and engaging in sex acts. So, yes, yes, I'm seeing people that. Um, I think that there's, we kind of shy away from it and we don't really talk about it as much um, compared to other Western societies, but I wouldn't say we'd necessarily condemn it all the way because, I mean, sex sells. That's why it's in our music videos and things like that. Now, do you think people are biased in terms of women who frequently have sex as opposed to like men? who have sex frequently? I feel like there is a bit of a bias there. Oh yes, a lot. A lot of people are really biased in the country. It's part of the world. They are biased because they feel like we mentioned in the book all about these things. So we shouldn't even indulge in these things. It's supposed to be um, immaculate. It's supposed to chill till marriage. Or if these feelings start to come, they're supposed to get married. Okay, and what do you think about people who choose to abstain from sex till marriage? I think that they are entitled to their own opinions and beliefs, and if that's what works with them, good for them. It's a choice, honestly. Choice, right? Yeah, it's personally their choice. I mean, there are other ways you can use a condom, you can be on a pill, but if you want to stay, it's always about the fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, and last question. Do you think anything will surprise you or annoy you today? I feel like depending on um, how the questions or the person I'm interacting with hits certain nerves, I may um, react, but I'll try to be as open-minded as possible. I am Gideon Idu. I am a legal practitioner, I'm a lawyer, and I am from Benue State, Nigeria. I love music, I like to make music. Um, pretty much like to play basketball, soccer, anything with an adrenaline and rush, I just love to indulge in. So, yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Stephanie, Stephanie with a Y. Um, I am into healthcare management and I like music. I like um, hanging out with my friends and I'm very family oriented. I think there is a bias in Nigeria towards how society views men that have sex as opposed to women that have sex. I agree. Um, I feel like most times when men talk about their sexual life or they open up about it and they say they've had X amount of um, sexual partners in their lifetime compared to women. Like men don't get a bash for it compared to how women would be like, oh, sometimes women feel like they have to lower their body count just so people don't view them as loose or people don't view them as, um, I guess, a bit wayward or something. I agree as well because I'd say I've been in circles where men brag a lot about, you know, I've smashed, her, I've smashed this number of people, even when they have it. It's like um, adding a feather to your cap. It's like, it's like a conquest thing. It's, uh, the number of ladies you sleep with determines how badass you are. But most of the time, if for to turn tables, women actually get bashed for being open minded about their sexuality. Having fun the same women, it's not, it's not supposed to be so. I've actually had um, people say that, guys say that if the person that they're dating has a body count more than five or six or even three, that now nah, they can never ever wipe out, even though they're willing 
to add to that body count. They just wouldn't because they know like she's been seen or I don't know, been with 20 people before. I just don't understand their mentality why guys say that. But yet you still want to have as a girlfriend, but you won't wipe her because she has many body counts. Yeah, it's pretty much almost the same thing when it comes to um, when it comes to marriage and guys take they take this a certain road that you know, I'd like to marry a virgin, I'd like to marry somebody who not not every guy, but most guys would like to marry a virgin, not somebody who has slept with anybody before. Okay. But then who determines how do you determine whether a man is a virgin or not? I tell you I'm a virgin, how do you know? Okay. I think the number of past sex partners like current partner has had or if they are virgin, is not important to me. Uh, it's not important to me. Because <laughs> uh, I would like to say I can consider myself as conservative sexually somehow. If I'm being honest, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, like I don't mind how many sexual partners someone has had. But if you're my partner, I just want to know. And I don't know whether it's me just trying to be nosy or whatever. I just feel like I would want to know. So um, it also helps me to, I don't know. I, I feel like regardless whether or not you are like your, your amount of sexual partners you've had, I feel like if we're together, we're going to end up still going to go to the hospital. We're both going to get checked out. We're going to make sure we're both clean before we even like start doing anything crazy. So. Okay, now that she said it, thinking about it, yes. If <laughs> if you had like um, lots of sexual partners before me, I'd be curious about your health condition, like your health status. I would want to know like, so much. So yes, I think I would want to know about your sexual partners. Okay, I believe anyone younger than eighteen is too young to have sex. <laughs> yes, anybody younger than it is too young to have sex. And I'm saying this from a legal perspective. I've been in court when I've seen cases where, um, well, they're regarded as minors, where um, 18 and under have had under 18s have had sex. I mean, it's it's something if they give you consent, but it's another thing when it is against the law. So in most cases, it's even considered rape if you have sex with somebody who is under 18. So yeah, from a legal perspective, that's a normal. I feel like, yes, you know, you should have sex with people under 18. You should have sex when you're mature enough to have sex. Like, it's something that comes with your mental, like you have to be sure you want to have sex and even if you're over 18 it doesn't necessarily make it like I guess guaranteed that you sh you're okay to start having sex now that you're above 18 so I feel like it really just depends on the ind individual and how um, their sexual their sexual education is like do you know to use a condom do you know to check for certain things okay okay <laughs> I think Nigerian schools should have sex education classes. I agree. I definitely agree. I believe that Nigerian schools should definitely put that in their curriculum. Even if they can't, I feel like they should have maybe parents or healthcare professionals come in for like a seminar or like a forum to educate people and let them know. Because the things that teenagers are willing to try anything and anything. So you have to let them know the dangers of what they are getting themselves into and let them realize that they are not um, able to really get bear the consequences yet. Um, prior to this, I didn't even know like schools they have sex education classes. Like, at secondary school, I remember I had sex ed. I had like group groups, like social groups who did these things. But yes, now I'm talking about it, it's very important because these days kids are exposed to lots of stuff. TV, magazines, what they mean, what they hear about, what even some of them experience, being nosy at that age. So I think, yeah, sex ed definitely is going to talk about the dangers of pregnancy, STDs, STIs, and PDF. Okay, I think abstinence is the best solution, especially 
until marriage? I think abstinence is a good solution. It's also like a personal preference if that's what you want to do. Um, but there are also other ways that you can also pr protect yourself, you know, and if you open yourself up to those options, you know what would best work for you. If abstinence happens to be the best choice or option, then go for that. Abstinence. Well, yeah, it depends on the person. I think it's like a subjective thing. It has to, it has to come from the person itself. Me personally, <laughs> let's just say abstinence has to be a subjective thing. I just... Okay. I believe my husband can rape his wife. Uh, under Nigerian law, there's no such provision where it says, that says, there's no such provision that says, um, there's anything called spousal rape. But personally, a husband can rape his wife. Personally, a husband can rape his wife. I mean, there are even times where, where law supports that there's no such thing. Even the Bible, I've forgotten what actual um, chapter and the actual book says something about the, wife, the, the husband not having um, ownership of his own body and the wife not having ownership of their own body. But that again is, to me, an absurdity. I feel like at the end of the day, if your wife or your husband is not consenting to, to having sex or intercourse with you, it is rape. It has to be consensual by both parties. Your husband and wife, be it boyfriend and girlfriend, be it just two casual friends. If you don't consent to it, it is rape. How do you even want to sleep with someone who says no? Exactly. How would you want to sleep with someone who says no? Like, no is no. It's okay. okay. I think sexual harassment in Nigeria is very common, but the issue is not being taken seriously. It is common in Nigeria. Like, it's everywhere. It's at the workplace, it's at the marketplace. It's even at home, if I'm being honest. Like, just before I left home, the uh, security guard was close to my house. I heard him calling this girl who was fucking so. It's really, really uncomfortable and weird stuff. So to them, they might not even understand that it's sexual harassment. Nobody does. So I think it always starts with, it has to start with an education. Because um, if we continue this way, kids coming up, who even know what it is. I saw a video yesterday on Twitter, this boy who was drumming and who like, um, hit the backside of the lady who was working with him. So if kids at these, these tender ages don't even know what sexual harassment is, and like you said, like a lot of people don't even know that it's sexual harassment because they don't know that they're doing it. It's like they haven't been, there's no fine line in saying, okay, when is it sexual harassment? And then when is it, I guess, paying a compliment? Or, you know, sometimes it could be in the workplace and some, like your superior, like, oh, you're looking very beautiful today. It makes your figure come out really nicely, your dress. And it's like, where's the line of, like, okay, where are we going with this? So I feel like people just need to. Um, do a better job of understanding where to draw the line. Okay, now the next question. Most people in Western countries believe that legalizing abortion is basically telling women you are free to decide what you do with your body, basically. With pro choice, meaning I am for the legalization of abortion, and pro life, meaning I am against the legalization of abortion. I think abortion should be legal in Nigeria. Oh wow. <laughs> um, I feel that, first of all, a woman should have the rights to her body. Does that make me pro-choice? I guess yes to an extent. But at the same time, I feel like if abortions are legalized in this country, because of the, um, the level of I guess it's education or no education at all. People may misuse it and then think of, oh, there's no point of me putting the condom on or whatever. Or, you know, even though you know that you can get different um, like diseases, they would still be like, there's always the choice of abortion. Right? Like, you know, last comes to last. It's going to happen. Like, I can get that done. I think I'll be deciding with her if I sound for choice because I will be for choice. Because 
looking at it from the legal aspect as well, the criminal code and the penal code, they stipulate in sections that if um, something about if uh, somebody engages in a miscarriage, there's a certain um, specified punishment of 14 years uh, for imprisonment of the person, the professional who does that, and then for the lady who does it, who agrees to it, she gets seven years. And for anybody who supplies equipment or anything to help in the miscarriage gets three years. But nothing is said about when it jeopardizes or it's about to jeopardize the mother's life. Hmm. It's just very rigid and it needs to be changed. Like I feel like women should have that option. They should have the option of what to do with their bodies. I mean, it's your life they're talking about, not your work. Okay. I believe Nigerians are very critical of women purchasing any sex related items such as condom, contraceptive pills, or even sex toys. I think because Nigeria is a very traditional conservative type of country, like looking at it from a broad perspective, um, yeah, like women, women they people that some kind of quirky way like what are you doing like they may be looked at as promiscuous if or like someone loose just because they're going out and they can't openly want to like buy a sex toy it's something like you do on the table hush hush if my friend went to Dubai and got from Dubai but like somewhere else like, other than Nigeria to get me this you know that men who can go out and just get to the condom from the kiosk yeah I'd say for men it's easy for us to do stuff like this casually walk into a pharmacy and buy stuff for a sex shop and buy something that but the thing is because of social engineering in nigeria that says that ah oh, you're a woman you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that oh, you should be restrictive i go and buy you know the is doing like that stuff like that <laughs> nah, we need to we need to understand that what is good, good for the goose is good for the grand at the same time so it still boils down to being equal what a man can do a man can do we should look at ourselves as being the same, not anybody on there. All sexual beings Okay, I believe anything other than a yes isn't consent. Mm. Anything other than a yes is not consent. She has to say yes and she has to make a yes because there are situations that can ruin you for the rest of your life because you thought she meant yes. Because she 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 did stuff that looked like she meant yes, but at the end of the day, she may have not said yes. So at the end of the day, you have to if you have to get it in writing, get it in writing. <laughs> but she has to say yes. Yes is the ultimate thing. I agree. She has to say yes. Like I know it's it's crazy, but you know, in the middle of everything, I feel like is this what you want? And you know, so there was something I saw on Twitter the other day. Um, somebody said, "Oh, guys, like when you, when you get home and you know everybody's going their separate ways, text her like, I hope this is what you really wanted, and you have to get that yes in so that God forbid she comes back and like I didn't want like this is what you said even after, yeah, so have receipts, have receipts. <laughs> that kind of thing. So yeah. Okay. I think prostitution, being a runs girl, or any other form of sex for money is a shameful." and should be condemned. I'll let you go first. <laughs> I feel like prostitution, like, and I guess doing any sexual act for money, I, I, I don't endorse it, I, I don't, but at the same time, if that is something that someone has, you know, willingly gone into, not that they were coerced or like forced into it or sex trafficking, like this is something that they wanted, um, they they know the risks already, especially if they're over 18, then that's what they should, that's, that's on them. But I wouldn't, if I could, I would try my best to uh, to make other avenues possible for them to do other things that they can do other than selling their body. Well, <coughs> uh, prostitution is objectively this country, it's illegal. And I do not have, I personally do not have reservations as to, to girls girls and the likes. I mean, I feel like it's business, it's contractual. It's a offer and acceptance thing. 
look, we sleep together, but this is what you give to me, or something. That's, that has to depend on both parties. So it's not something that has to be um, something of public discourse, it's in private space. That's between two people. It's as good as saying, no, I do not agree, so I'm not sleeping with you. It's not. Well, I think it's a subjective thing. It has to come from the person, not from the people. It's not something that should, I feel like, should be. Uh, I mean, it's not something I feel like the public should be more concerned with themselves so with. It's, it's not your business. Okay, I think it's possible for people to be asexual where they do not have any sexual feelings for anyone. I have a friend who is asexual actually. I don't know how it works because I feel that like if I see someone who is really like my spec, yeah, I think that they're hot. But for, for you to feel like you don't have anything whatsoever to anyone, I don't know how that works. Like my hormones aren't wired that way. <laughs> I have friends who are asexual. To them there's no sex thing in the sport. And Bringing feelings or any other type of thing that is not physical into it is is a which means so <laughs> so it pretty much is like some guys. I come from the angle of some guys. Most actually even comes from guys most of the time. Most times it's guys who are sexual because they feel like I mean sex is a sport. If you start to get feelings in, it ruins things. It spoils everything. So. Being sexual is, is weird to me. I'm not asexual. I don't think I could ever be asexual. I get touchy at these things, so I just manage them. I respect people who are. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, I respect people who are. Okay, any last words? Um, if, if you don't, if you're still trying to figure out like your sexuality and things like that, I feel like you should definitely educate yourself. Don't um, limit yourself to the boundaries of this country and your society. Definitely see what you you keep other people that may be like you, depending on what you know you like or what you don't like, and kind of um, grow and better yourself, especially like education wise when it comes to sex, because a lot of people don't know. They they think they know, but they really don't know. Yes, it's yeah. I think exposure is the main thing. But look at how other societies do it. Are they thriving? Are they not thriving? But no, nah, engineers like to be, you know what, we've been like this for a certain number of years and we like it, it has worked for us and let us continue to be like this. And we don't want anybody to corrupt or influence us, let's stay that way. It's not supposed to be so. Like you're supposed to be developing and developing. I mean, other countries are 300, 150 years old and they're just coming up and still having this rigid and non-flexible movements towards attaining changes. We're supposed to be changing, we're supposed to be acclimatizing to different trends, different um, notions of things, as long as they help society. So it shouldn't be just based on, nah, this is the way my dad did it, this is the way his dad did it. Um, nah, society isn't supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be a mimic. It's supposed to change at some point. Okay. So, hi Dion. Hi, hello. So, did you learn anything new? Yes, I learned something new. Specifically, the fact that I even thought only guys could be sexual, asexual, asexual, asexual. I discovered that ladies too can also, also be like that. So. Okay, hi. so did you learn anything new? Um, I felt like I did learn something new um, from the legal ex uh, perspective because he had a lot of legal perspective um, information, so it was, it was, I did learn something, I'm happy I did. Okay, now thoughts about your partner, Dio? Um, I feel like he is very um, informed about information regarding like, like legal information in Nigeria, because I don't really know things like that and um, how it relates to um, the topic that we were discussing, so he's Stand up guy. Okay, now thoughts about your partner, Stephanie? Well, she was fun. I I was jittery at first, but she made me comfortable. She made me easy, and I like to have more conversations with her. Okay. Okay, and now do you have anything you want to say to the whole Nigerian public or 
anyone who is not really informed about sex and safe sex and everything like that. I feel like um, people who like don't really discuss about you know sex and the different um, dangers or uh, I guess positive stuff. They should try and especially young people they should try and engage and um, have discussions and if you don't already have like sex educators at your school I think you should try and get some who can come in at least maybe once every couple of months and just inform um, the people about sex and things that come with it. And now do you have anything you would like to say to the Nigerian public like any final words in terms of sex and how we relate to sex? Yes. Read a book Go on YouTube, listen to seminars about sex and other topics related to sex. Because it does not start and end in Nigeria. You have to broaden your mind, you have to have some form of exposure, even if you've not traveled abroad. So. Thank you.